Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with chicken leg toast. That's right, chicken and waffles. You've been served and served and served. A little too much in my opinion, since I'm not a big chicken and waffles guy. But this delicious, hilarious to look at, savory French toast is more than just a competing brunch item. It's really my new favorite way to turn one chicken leg into a complete meal. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by placing two chicken legs into a saucepan, since we're making two portions. And then to that, we will add a little carrot, celery, and onions, or as my French friends would call it, a mirepoix. Oh yeah, they have a different word for everything. And then we will also toss in a couple cups of chicken broth. And my broth was seasoned, but if yours isn't, you might want to also toss in a big pinch of salt. And that's it, we'll head to the stove and we'll place this on high heat and we will impatiently wait for it to come to a simmer. And once it does, we can reduce our heat to medium low and then we'll cover this and we will let it simmer for 20 minutes, which is gonna be the halfway point of what will be a 40 minute cooking time. And what we'll do after 20 minutes is uncover it and we will carefully turn those chicken legs over. And please do be careful because if you tear the skin, it will curl up when it bakes, and never in a beautiful way. So we will turn those legs carefully, and then we'll pop the lid back on, and we'll simmer that for another 20 minutes, at which point our chicken legs should be just about cooked through, but definitely not falling apart yet. And what we'll do is remove those to a plate, and we will let those cool, and then pop them in the fridge until we need them. And that's it, once those drumsticks are chillaxing, we will raise our heat up to medium high, because we want to reduce these liquids down to about a half cup, or maybe even a little less. And no, we're not going to measure. We're just going to eye it. And besides getting a head start on cooking the chicken, we've also infused the broth with even more chickeny flavor, which we are now going to concentrate even further. And then we'll eventually use this as the base to build the savory custard that we're going to soak our French toast in. So I went ahead and reduced mine down until it looked like this. And as long as yours reduces close to this, you're going to be fine. And then what we'll do is pull it off the heat and pass it through a strainer. And we can, if we want, just use the liquid that passes through. But to thicken this up a little more and add some extra flavor, I actually like to press some of those veggies through the screen. And I think you should probably do the same. And then once that's set, we can go ahead and season it up, which I'm going to do with some freshly ground black pepper, as well as another pinch of salt. And then I also like to add about a teaspoon of freshly picked thyme leaves, which is an amazing chicken herb. And then we'll also do some freshly grated lemon zest, which is a perfect pairing with thyme, especially on chicken. Oh, and there's actually a variety called lemon thyme. And if you grow that, you could just skip a step. Speaking of which, I almost skipped the step where we add the cayenne. And then of course, to make a custardy batter for French toast, we're gonna need some cream, which I'm doing in the form of creme fraiche, but regular cream would also work, as would, if times were tough, just some milk. But the creme fraiche is richer and tangier, so I'm going with that. And that's it, we'll finish up with two large eggs, and then we'll take a whisk and give this a good mix. And because I'm doing a savory chicken-flavored French toast, I'm not adding any sugar or vanilla or nutmeg or cinnamon. Although I guess if you wanted to, you could. I mean, you are after all the kernel mustard, of what goes in your chicken gravy colored custard. And yes, you could add a little bit of Dijon if you wanted. But anyway, that's everything I'm putting in. And once that's mixed up, we can go ahead and grab our stale bread, which I sliced the day before, and then let sit out overnight. And we don't want this rock hard, but it should be fairly firm and pretty dry, so it can soak in that delicious custard. And as you can see, we want something nice and thick. And what we'll do is transfer that into some kind of baking dish or pan, ideally where it just barely fits, and we'll go ahead and pour over our custard batter. And then probably the most important part of this recipe would be to give this bread enough time to soak properly. All right, if we only gave this a few minutes and then tried to cook it, we will have not achieved full penetration. And when it comes to chicken leg toast, oh, we are gonna need full penetration. So once that batter's been transferred in and we flip those over a time or two, which may or may not be actually necessary, we will wrap this up and we will pop it in the fridge for at least an hour. And you can, if you want, go as long as overnight. So I went ahead and wrapped that up and popped it in the fridge for about an hour and a half, at which point it looked like this. 
And as you can see, it's absorbed almost all that batter, except for a little bit at the bottom. But that's fine. We're actually going to use that, slash knead that. And that's it. Once our thickly sliced stale bread has been soaked, we will head to the stove, where we're going to brown it over medium heat for a couple minutes per side, and a little bit of butter, or in my case, a little bit of clarified butter. But you could use regular butter, or olive oil, or a combination, or pretty much any fat, including chicken fat. But no matter what you use, we'll let that brown for a couple minutes, and then we'll go ahead and flip it over, which I should have choreographed a little better. There we go. And then once that second side is brown for a couple minutes, we will pull that pan off the heat, and we will transfer down to a foil lined pan that we've greased with a little bit of butter, and then we'll pull our what are now chilled chicken legs out of the fridge, and we'll place one right in the center of each piece of bread, but not just place, we want to place and press. Okay, we really do want to push this down into the bread because what's going to happen when this goes in the oven is that those eggs in the batter are going to expand and our bread's actually going to puff up or souffle if you're fancy. And if we don't push our chicken legs down in, they might actually roll off the toast. And then what are we going to do? I guess just pick it up and put it back on. But anyway, the point is push them down. It will look better. Oh, and speaking of looking better, We'll go ahead and brush over that little bit of extra batter left over in the dish since we don't want to waste it and it will probably help our chicken leg brown up a little better. And then once that was accomplished, I decided to season the top with a little bit of salt. But before I did that, I decided to turn this one around so that they would be lined up and ready for my contractually obligated pictures. And then like I said, I seasoned the top with a little bit of salt. Plus, because it just felt right, I decided to do a little bit of grated Parmesan over the top and of course, we're using the real stuff, Parmigiano Reggiano, which always adds a little bit of extra savoriness. And like that batter, will also help the browning. And then last but not least, before these go in the oven, I decided to do one more shake of cayenne over the top. Because I don't have a reason. And that's it. These are now ready to transfer into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. Or until everything's beautifully brown. And they look like this. Oh yeah, those are beautiful, if I do say so myself. I mean, strange and bizarre looking, but beautiful nonetheless. And if people chuckle when you serve this, do not take that as an insult. Okay, they're not laughing at your chicken leg toast. They're laughing with it. And that's it, I grabbed a spatula and served that up next to an arugula prop salad. And then you could certainly serve this as is, but I didn't. I went ahead and spooned over some of my famous dragon syrup, which I'm sorry, is too good to give you the recipe for. Okay, fine. It's just maple syrup with some shiratsu and cayenne. And when it comes to chicken leg toast, there is no better sauce or condiment. And that's it. I grabbed a fork and knife and went in for a taste, starting with just a piece of the French toast component, which was absolutely magnificent. Okay, if you haven't had French toast that's been baked in the oven after being pan fried, so that that custard inside has time to cook. You, my friend, have not had French toast. So that was amazing, but I wanted to try a piece with the chicken, which was definitely more amazing. All right, I know we serve this with that sweet spicy syrup, but everything else here is straight savory, and besides the chicken flavor of the actual drumstick, because we reduced that chicken drumstick infused broth, and used that for the French toast batter, and then baked it with that piece of chicken on top, which of course means those natural drippings were soaking into the bread also. This thing is so flavorful and comforting and satisfying that no one's going to be upset that all they had for dinner was a piece of toast and one scrawny chicken leg. But anyway, to summarize, I could not have enjoyed this anymore. And I'm sure you will figure out the best way to eat this, but eventually I think we have to lift and separate so we get better access to the meat and the toast. And no, you can't do this with a chicken breast. I mean, you can, but I don't want you to. Oh, and if you were wondering if this was sort of inspired by our million dollar chicken, where we roast a whole chicken on top of some toast, and there's definitely creme fraiche involved, yes, it was. And once I can't easily get any more meat off the bone with a fork and knife, I am definitely going to pick that drumstick up and gnaw the rest of that meat right off the bone. But the good news is I'm going to do that off camera. So let me go ahead and wrap this up by telling you one more time how incredibly good this was, and easy, and hilarious to look at. And if you're watching your budget, 
This is a relatively inexpensive meal. So for all those reasons and more, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.